Hey guys, this is Kuro and welcome to Promo Look At. These are basically videos that I do for tabletop gaming. And without further ado, today's promo we're going to be looking at is for King of Tokyo, a game by Richard Garfield. Now, before I get uh, started with these promos, this is actually a promo set from 11 cards called the Amusement Park Promo Set, as what people call it. Um, I'm, I already did two cards in a previous video, which were the discard cards. Now the only cards left are the keep cards. And those are the other nine cards. And I'm only going to be doing three of these keep cards in this video. I will leave a link uh, to the discard cards in the link below. But without further ado, the promos we're going to be looking at are these lovely three guys. Now, the first promo we're going to be looking at, and here's a background. I'm going to just show you guys the back to all of them. They all have the same background, and that's the only thing I have as a caveat for this. But I'll explain it in a bit. And we're going to be looking at Sleepwalker. And here's a closer look at it. Now, it actually looks pretty cool because all these cards that I have look like they're all Gigazor uh, for these promos that I'm going to be doing. And it looks like Gigazor is just sleeping and he's walking through all of this. And uh, the moon is out and then there's clouds and he's walking through all the, the buildings. So I think it's a funny looking card. Now, what does this do for... If you purchase this card for three, you get to keep it. Unlike in the previous video where I said you discard these cards. It's an instant effect. These actually stay with you. They're passive uh, abilities. So you can spend three energy to gain one victory point. So that's actually pretty good for anybody who likes to go for victory points. Because you could just keep using this as much time as you want. As long as you have the energy to provide for it. So you have three energy. You get another victory point. You could do that again if you have three more. Then you gain two victory points. So it's not a bad card for anybody who's going for uh, victory points. Me personally, I like to smack people. So no thank you. Next. We're going to be talking about Reflective Hide, and here's a close look at Reflective Hide. Now, there is a ruling with this, and I'm going to talk about it soon, uh, but as for the picture, it actually looks pretty cool. He looks like he has like a, a planet uh, shield uh, from the looks of it, and then all the beams are reflecting, so he got shot here, and he reflects it back, but it looks like he's just shooting everybody from the looks of the car because it doesn't look like it's just going back into that one direction or maybe he's being attacked by uf souls i don't know um the only thing i don't like because it looks like it is gigazor but that mask i don't like how the mask looks like maybe that's where that power reflected hide comes from and that force field shield comes out but i just don't like the mask it, it makes me think that it, he's trying to be meta knight and he's cosplaying as him but I don't know. It just I don't like the mask. I, I'd rather have like his lizard face. But who knows if this was Gigazar? All right. So you get to keep this card, and the effect is if you suffer damage, the monster that inflicted the damage suffers one as well. So there's two kind of rulings to this one, and I'm gonna explain because a lot of people do get confused. Now for this rule, I'm gonna say it's really up to your, your the group you're playing with whether you want to do this rule or not. For me, it just says suffer, uh, the damage suffers one as well. So it just sound kind of sounds like, because the wording doesn't really say much. It just says that you, if you get hit by one, you're going to reflect that one. So if you get reflect by, hit by two, you're only going to reflect one from the sounds of it. Because the, the, the monster that inflicted damage suffers one as well. So it really is up to your game group. You can say, well, if I take three, you're going to take three as well. So you guys can play that as, uh, with that ruling instead because the card really doesn't signify whether you get hit and then you reflect all of it or just one. So it really is up to your game group. Um, I couldn't find anything on it, so I couldn't say for that. Now, the other ruling that a lot of people did confuse this uh, card for is yielding Tokyo. You do not yield Tokyo for an effect because this is an effect. So if I were to get hit and I was in Tokyo, and I get smacked, I can yield, yes, because he rolled a dice that smacked me. Now, all of a sudden, my opponent goes into Tokyo, and he needs to heal, let's just say, because he only has two life, and he smacks the person that has this card, because he wants to yield Tokyo, the person, he cannot yield Tokyo, because the person is not inflicting a damage by a claw rolling dice. It is only reflecting damage and hitting your the opponent because the card is doing an effect so let's clarify that right now guys it's only in effect you only way you can kneel tokyo or get taken out of tokyo is if you roll a claw and that's how the opponent can say well i'm kneeling tokyo and then i can take tokyo so that is the ruling with that this card does not 
make you to get out of Tokyo. So that's the ruling with it. I know a lot of people were confused and I saw a lot of messages about this card and online saying oh, my this opponent won because of this and I'm like no no it's because of a roll of a die and that's how you yield Tokyo. So that's reflective hide. And lastly Mr. Dinosaur signal because it reminds me of the bat signal uh, but in daytime is super jump and there's only clouds a little bit of buildings here. It's not much the promo besides uh the dinosaur signal but it's a little pretty cool uh it, for the purchase of four electric energies you get to keep this car like i said uh once each turn you may spend one ele energy to negate one damage you are receiving so it's pretty cool because if you get one damage if you smack the opponent that has reflected high and they t give you one damage you could spend that one energy just to negate this one damage that you're dealing to that person and then that person was going to deal back to you you can just negate it so that's pretty cool and it does say once each turn so it doesn't say that it's only on your turn it means that if you're playing with bob you can negate one damage if bob gives you to you if it's uh johnny's turn you can negate johnny's one damage that he's giving to you and if it's sheila's turn you can negate one damage on her turn as well and if it's my turn i can negate one damage as well so it's a pretty cool card it's not broken to say because you only negate one damage so I if i get hit twice in my turn one because of an effect and then one because i get smacked then sorry guys i can only negate one damage so it's not broken it's pretty cool for that effect so yeah these are the king of tokyo uh three of them of the promo sets and like i said they all look like they're gigazor so it, it looks pretty cool just that mask for the middle one it might not be gigazor but who knows and maybe there was and that's the reflective hide <laughs> But yeah, are these guys still available? So let's go to that. Um, yeah, they're still available through uh, people who are selling them. Now, I will say they're not available with uh, the old ways, which was uh, the Japan operation uh, that they fundraised that Yellow had for them. So any money they got and they sold these promos and they sent to them. No, they, they are, they're no longer available in that method. And um, I will talk about two promos and they're not these two promos when uh, I talk about them. That they were out of stock during this uh, time. They were also uh, these were the actually the first promos to come out in 2011, and uh, in 2000 uh, they were handed out in tournaments and conventions. Same goes for uh, when they got uh, reprinted back in 2013. They were also given um, through conventions and tournaments. Uh, France was the only ones that got individuals of these. I'm not too sure how they got them. Maybe one was a local store, one was a convention, one was this and that i'm not too sure but they were handed out individuals um and lastly they were also which i recently found out they were also released during the kickstarter campaign of the dice tower in 2014 for season 10. so if you were able to purchase it then there for promo pack a that was another way you could have gotten these promos but no you can no longer get them um the old methods you have to if you want to get them now you have to buy them through either ebay or the geek market which uh is sellers by you and me and from what i noticed there is a dutch and a french edition for those who uh are from who can read those languages uh you can um purchase it from them for 15 so it's not that expensive but if you want the english versions like i have you have to basically pay more than 20 bucks because uh that's the cheapest i saw on ebay as of right now it's just 20 uh us and um on the geek market the cheapest is 25 uh the most i saw it like i would pay is 30 and lastly there's a guy in ebay who always sells promos for 95 and i would not recommend buying that from that guy but i never checked this thing but who knows if someone's crazy enough to do that but uh yeah these are the promos for that set uh for the the amusement park uh, set there's only three um, would they change the game dramatically, uh, dramatically, I should say? No, they won't change the game. They're just more varying into the game. Um, you, there is 66 cards in, in, the, in the main base game. So you don't really need these cards to add uh, an extra 11. So it'll be 77 cards to your game. So your can, game can get better. No, it just changes the variety to the, each game that you have. And you might see them, you might not. It's not game changing the base game. It already has good cards as it is. So um, I do recommend them. But... But here is the one caveat I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that is the background. So I'm going to show you guys the backgrounds to the Halloween costume pack, the um, regular uh, second edition uh, background for this one, and the first edition background, which was this one. And uh, 
well, first edition set, um, <laughs> King of Tokyo, and then second edition for the base game. Um, but yeah, the backgrounds are different. Now, this is a caveat because if you don't like sleeping cards, then um, I wouldn't recommend getting these because then all of a sudden it's like you know what you're going to draw. You know what's coming up next uh, when you're setting up the cards. And so it kind of makes it like a little bit unfair. But the solution is you get any type of dark sleeve uh, plastic and you put it in the back that way you don't get to know what's going to be drawn next that's the solution so if you want to get it and then put a uh, sleeve them up with uh, a, a black background or well a dark background go right ahead because that's how i recommend them uh to be sleeved so yeah they're not bad promo cards i i actually do like them i would recommend getting them if you guys can get them uh, 20 bucks is not bad 30 bucks nah, still not too bad and you are getting 11 cards it's not like you're getting uh one card and it's 30 bucks or 20 depending on uh how much you're gonna as you're gonna pay for it but what i recommend them yeah but it's up to you guys to tell me in the comments below do you recommend getting these promo cards well <laughs> getting these promo these are just three out of the 11 amusement park promo sets so would you recommend them uh, tell it tell it in the comments below say yeah guys go ahead get them or no they're not worth it 20 bucks is too much money uh 30 bucks is too much money whatever the case is it'd be like no and and you have good guards in the base game it's up to you guys to tell me in the comments below but without further ado i got a special thanks for you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time